Um, my name is Danny Cushper. I am running for Congressional District 15. So that district is uh, Dennis Ross's seat, our current congressman. He is retired. Um, I've known Dennis Ross for years, a friend. Uh, you know, what I enjoyed about this district, and I've lived and worked in this district my whole life, Meaning that it's shifted a few times, you know, census changes and things like that. So I was born and raised south of Gibsonton, Florida. So if you know Gibsonton, it's called Showtown, USA. And that's where that was the winter home of all the carnival rides and operations. So it was very eclectic. A lot of fun to see some of this. You know, we had the alligator man who was married to the milk woman. <laughs> Lobster boy. Uh, hands like this. We, we had the giant who was married to a lady who had no legs, and he was like seven five, seven six. He was huge, big man, uh, Tomeo, and and so in Gibsonton, uh, you know, he was probably the one of the leaders of of the sideshow groups. So he built the the, the Giants Camp restaurant, the Giants Camp Marina. So it was right on the Alify River. And he was also a TV repairman. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, That's funny. As a kid, come on in. So as a kid in the 60s, you know, we get the TV, the color TV, whatever, goes on the fridge. You call the TV repairman. Well, my dad used to choke. He was a joker. And we were farmers. He loved to choke. We had told me that the giant was hungry one day and ate his wife's legs. Now that's a bad joke. Oh, I'm a five-year-old and I'm freaking out. Well, the giant comes to our house to fix our TV. And it's just me and my mom. And he's knocking on the door and I'm screaming, running throughout the house, thinking he's going to, you know, eat us. But, uh, but he didn't, obviously. Good people. But it was a good life to have, a fun time to grow up. So we were farmers. We farmed tomatoes, um, ornamental tropical fish. When we started the tomato industry, it was really the Kushmers, the Ellsberries, and the Digmas that started the Ruskin tomatoes. Um, ornamental fish, we, we were the third tropical fish farm in this country, really in the world, to start commercially growing and, uh, tropical fish. So we sold our, 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 we got out of the tomato industry mostly because of NAFTA. Yeah, that, was, that was really the first farming industry in Florida that was done in by that trade agreement. Um, and, and it still exists, but it became an industry where you had to be in multiple locations. You had to farm in Ruston, Immokalee, up in Jackson County, uh, and, and even in California and Mexico. You had to be diversified and be multinational. We didn't want to do that. You know, we didn't want to buy a bigger truck. So we got out of that business. And, <laughs> yeah, and then we sold our, our fish farm because, like a lot of farmers in that area, uh, it was more valuable for rooftops instead of treetops. That's kind of what the farmers would say. So, so we sold that. We were the oldest ornamental fish farm in the world under the same ownership when we sold. Um, I got into real estate, so a lot of farmers did. Didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up. I was still too young to not work. I had to work. And um, then I spent a few years as a Ruskin Chamber of Commerce Executive Director. My home. Uh, they needed a, a position. It was kind of a a fill-in that kept me there for about four years, but it was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, got back into real estate, and then, then, as a farmer and as an or in organizations like that, I knew that I needed to talk about farming, and I needed to support farmers, and, and even keep our, but the 90s, the farmers struggled in the 90s. The environmentalist was after us. There were so many things going on, so I go to Tallahassee with Washington. I was part of the, the uh, University of Florida's Wedgworth Leadership Program for Agriculture. We traveled the world talking about farming. And so I knew that what I want to do is I want to be a speaker of, for farmers. I wanted to promote farming. But I didn't want to go to school and get a degree in communication. I, I was too old to do that. So I, I had to get, get somebody to give me a chance. So uh, I, I tell people I went to the dark side. I, I was hired to go to work for the Southwest Florida Water Management District, and I worked out of Bartow for two reasons they hired me. Number one, to, to, to help the farmers, mm -hmm. and, and the farmers didn't much like the Water Management District at the time, so let's work together. And number two was to create the Polk Regional Water Cooperative. 
So here in Lake County, you have the Lake County Water Supply Authority. Tampa has Tampa Bay Water. South of Polk County is the Peace River. And then Orlando area has Toho. So all of these organizations were coming together to help conserve water. Well, Polk County has 17 municipalities and a county, all fighting over the same water. They were becoming an island unto themselves. So they didn't like each other. You know, Winter Haven didn't necessarily like Lakeland. Frostproof thought, you know, Dundee was going to do them in. It was just, that's how they were. So it took 10 years, but we brought together, I brought together 15 of the 17 municipalities in the county and <coughs> signed a deal and created the Water Supply Authority. Okay. And then I resigned. And that was the only reason I went to work for them, really. Uh, I didn't want to be a, a long-term government employee. I didn't want to be a bureaucrat the rest of my life. <laughs> So, so I left, got back in the private sector and worked for a company called Highland Precision Ag. And we do technology solutions for farmers, regulation solutions for farmers around the country. So the last couple years I've traveled California, northeast, north, southeast, just working with a lot of our growers, helping them with labor issues, which is just tragic right now and Congress can help them, but they're not. Uh, helping them with uh, with uh, regulation issues, EPA, Army Corps of Engineers. I've actually written a bill, one page, that I was trying to get in the farm bill, but unfortunately that fell on uh, <coughs> deaf ears, and Washington is just so incapable of doing anything at this point in time. Yeah. So, but I over the last two years I've come up with these solutions for, for several different things, and uh, so that's what led me here today. So we'll just go back real quick. When I was 17 years old, I hunted. We had a hunt club. We still do. It's called the Royal Palm Hunt Club. We hunt in Steenhatchee, but at the time we were in the Everglades. I love Steenhatchee. Isn't it great? Yeah, we're yeah. actually in, in Jenna, <coughs> Dixie County. Yeah, I know where Jenna is. Yeah, that's yes. where our property is. Um, I love it too. Wish I'd be there <laughs> coming up, but too busy. But anyway, when I was 17, one of our members who, who's retired and not with us anymore had said, what are you going to do when you grow up? I said, when I'm in my, I'm going to farm, but when I'm in my 50s, I'm going to run for Congress. I'm 17 years old. He said, well, why would you wait? I said, I need wisdom. And 50 was a long way away. I figured that was a lot of wisdom <laughs> at, at 50. At least the time it was. <laughs> was fast, doesn't it? Yeah, that was yeah. Yeah. 55, yeah. 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 So, and, and I didn't want it to be uh, a career. My parents were against career politicians, even then, back in, you know, in the 80s and 70s. And, and what they would tell me, career politicians don't allow the young people that have even better ideas mm -hmm. to get up there and make a change. Mm -hmm. Because you, it's hard to be an incumbent. Yeah. It's it just it whether is. you're a Democrat or a Republican. Yeah. They write the rules, they district themselves, once they're there, they're there. Yeah. So you got to get the people that's willing to lead or force them with term limits in Congress. I, and, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe. We're going to try. So here we were. April rolls around. And it was April 16th. You know, I've, I've lived my life, done my work. I'm married. I have four kids. They're grown. My 90-year-old Korean War veteran father lives with us. We're taking care of him now. But Dennis Ross announces that he's retired. Well, I'm in my 50s. I'm going to run for Congress. <laughs> so I called my wife, and she was all in. I said, no, 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 we really got to talk about this. You can't be all in right off the bat. And uh, I talked to, to our CEO that runs our company, and, man, he was all in. And we just, you know, we spent a few days praying a lot. And on Monday, we decided we would do that. So here we are today. We, we're really running on, on there's a, many issues, but my top three issues are a balanced budget, uh, term limits, and local control. So they're on a balanced budget quickly, just, you know, I'm not going to sign a budget that's not balanced. I'm just not going to do that. Uh, I've, even Rick Scott brought up, you know, if Congress can't pass a balanced budget, they shouldn't be paid. Right. I'm all for that. That's right. It's the way it should be. Uh, as far as term limits, I started the campaign with a pledge, I'm only going to serve eight years. That's it. Uh, no more. And, and none of the other candidates did that, at least in the first few weeks. 
And then one of the other candidates jumped on board and said, all right, I'm only going to serve eight years too. And that's good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Up here pressure. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so I was surprised that one came out and did that, but that's good. <coughs> I'm glad he did. Um, and then I'll look, and, and I will fight for term limits in Congress. And I had a, I was up here, and I had a fellow come up to me after saying that one time. He said, you know, you really got to, you should lay off on the term limits. That's a Republican. I said, why? Well, he said, well, I think term limits has really ruined Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. The bureaucrats run everything. He said, well, then we're not electing the right leaders. Mm -hmm. Because I think the elected people are the ones that are supposed to be the leaders. So they're not telling the bureaucrats what to do. Mm -hmm. They're letting the bureaucrats tell them what to do. So if, if there's a problem with term limits, it's a problem with the people you elect. Sorry. So I'm going to fight for that, and, and I will encourage the early retirement of those bureaucrats. It won't change. The president's doing a pretty good job of that in the executive office. He's still struggling with one branch. we got to fight. Yeah. But, uh, but there may be an <laughs> ulterior motive there. I just don't know. He's a smart man. Yeah. But the legislative branch needs to have those term limits, and they need to start cleaning the swamp For sure. there. For sure. And then local control, really. You know, everybody says, the conservatives, we need to do away with the Department of Education. Okay, what well, we do. I, maybe it should be a department of seven or nine, and that would just be a board that would set a nationwide standard that would ensure we're competitive worldwide. That's all they should do. Our local school boards should be the ones making the decisions for our children. Washington and Tallahassee are clear examples of why we have charter schools. Clear examples of why private schools are growing. Mm -hmm. Because public education has become our social engineering mm -hmm. group. We don't teach yes. civics, we don't teach reading, writing, and the state like we used to. There's no PE in school. Come on, people. That's yeah. what we all had when we were exactly. kids. Like, that's, where, that's where the fight broke out. You thought you'd be, you know, fight you stick up for yourself. <laughs> it's all about growing up. It's all about being a man or a woman and understanding your place in life. And Washington's taken that away. So, so Department of Education needs to be shrunken dramatically. Uh, EPA. EPA needs to be rolled up into the Department of Interior. There's no reason why it is a, as a cabinet level position. The bill that I wrote uh, would do just that. And, and what it does in Florida, Florida has a program called Best Management Practices for Farmers. It's, it's a mandated uh, bill. Uh, and what it does, if a farmer incorporates a best management practice, that saves <coughs> water and improves water quality. That's the two reasons for it then the Department of Environmental Protection backs off. And they assume you're in compliance. Now, the fact that they have to assume, and we had to pass a law to make someone assume you're in compliance, go flies in the face of the Constitution, we're all innocent until proven guilty. But we had to make a law to make that happen. But it works. So my bill would do the same thing at the federal level. For farmers, for business owners, for landowners, that incorporate best management practices that improve water quality and, and save water. EPA backs off, Army Corps backs off, has that assumption of compliance. Further, let's reduce their footprint here. We have, in Florida, there are five, well, in Hillsborough County, and there's probably here too, there's at least four, but in Hillsborough County, there's five agencies, local, regional, and state, that manage water, manage uh, in the environment. Mm -hmm. Five. Now they give allocate control to different groups so they're not all on you every day. Mm -hmm. You know, they delegate authority. But there's five. Yeah. Then you throw EPA and Army Corps in the mix. Yeah. There's seven. Wow. That's ridiculous. It is. So let's take the money that we send Washington and let's start cutting at number one. But we can slowly start block granting those dollars back to the states without stipulations. Mm -hmm and let the DEP or the local governments manage their environmental resources. So, uh, the problem with the, the federal government is they send their money back to us with the stipulations. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if you want to do an infrastructure, you want to build that road out, put the, 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 the pavers out there, you know, really build your waterfront up. As a city, as a county, you had to hire certain contractors you had, if you had federal money. Mm -hmm. And it probably delayed that project. <coughs> months, maybe even years, because you, you know, you had to buy the, get the right people on board. 
when your county already has those same rules in place. But Washington has a separate, separate set. That's got to go away. Our local government, we hold them accountable. You walk across the street, and you knock on their door, and you can give them a what for. And if they don't answer the door, you go into the county commission meeting and put in a blue card or whatever you guys do up here. And you embarrass them. Yeah. Can't do that in Tallahassee. Vance is good at that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is. You can't do that in Tallahassee as easy. And you certainly don't do that in Washington. So where does the power need to be? Right over there. Back with the people. Back with the people. Exactly. So that's my three points. There's many others. I have labor solutions. Uh, I have... I truly have, yeah, I'm a conservative, I've been endorsed by the Florida Right to Life organization. That's a great organization. It is, and, and uh, one other candidate in this race has been endorsed, but well, only one other. So there's only two of us that have been endorsed by that organization in this race. Uh, I don't know why the others weren't, maybe they didn't fill out the form, but that's, a, that's an important thing to do. Um, I'm a businessman, I, I'm, my values are simple. It's faith, family, and, and, and our country. And that really is it. So, uh, but I have put together ideas that, you know, when I'm out talking to people, it's easy to say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pro life, I'm, you know, pro gun. I, you know, I got a bunch of them. Just put a video <coughs> on, on Twitter last night that everybody lost their mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I almost deleted it. I was scared. It was looking at Newton. Now, I'm not a politician. So, who am I? And I got a whole lot of hate. <laughs> All about guns. That means you've done something right. That's what I was going to say. That's what I So I'm working an angle on Facebook. I don't know if I'm going to put it there yet. But, so you're uh, kind of like feeling out the people. You and do. See, you and do. see how they are mm -hmm. and issues. And you do. The ones that are against you will certainly make it. And hatred. And hatred. And hatred. You know, there were so many is. cuss words and yeah, things. Yeah, today like, it's horrible. I would never do that. It's horrible. If I thought, you know, Most conservatives won't. That's why we were considered right. the silent majority is right. because we didn't speak up. Right. We, didn't, we didn't We didn't. lower ourselves to that level. Right. And so... And but now we got to... Trump with his... That's right. That's right. Now we got to fight it. You know, how many times... I, this is me. And heads exploded. At our, at our age... I believe we all probably said the same thing with, with George W. was there, uh, when his daddy was there, maybe even when Reagan was there, but certainly with George W. Man, I wish he would just get up there and say, Damn Speak it! Up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we got a guy doing that. Yes. And it's like, freaked us out at first. Yeah. 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 When McCain yeah. was exactly. running and when Romney was running. Yeah. They were wussies. <coughs> oh, yeah. They were. They uh, yeah, were. they were. Yeah. 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 And now you McCain have wouldn't even challenge Obama. They wouldn't, on no, they wouldn't get Nothing. in there and fight. They his wouldn't get books, in there and fight. His books told us exactly who, who he was. was. Yeah. And there was no challenge. Yeah, except for Sarah. Uh, right. Yeah. She yeah. did it. She was like yeah. a surrogate. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we, we've we learned that we must elect leaders that are, that are business people. You know, in my race, there's six of us. It's a big field. Uh, don't know how we all got in there mm -hmm. in short notice, mm -hmm. but we did. Uh, and, but I think there's a clear choice. There, there is two politicians. There is one fella that, that was in the House. He quit the House to go to FSA. He quit the FSA to run for Congress all in six months. You know, so that's one side, and it's all taxpayer jobs. And you have another fella that, that, you know, that was in the House, is in the House, running for Attorney General, quit that to run for Congress. They're good people. In fact, Neil, I've worked with Neil for 10, 12 years. I do like Neil a lot, but they're politicians. And then there's the other four, and the other four are not politicians, you know, and, and, uh, and I think that with my opportunities of, of, I live in Brandon, born and raised, spent 12 years, and still today I have an office in Mulberry, 12 years in Polk County. Um, you know, in the beginning there was articles, Hillsborough versus Polk. Yeah. Hillsborough wants the congressman to be from, from Hillsborough. Polk County is going to fight that, and there shouldn't be that. I told somebody yesterday, I'm a Republican, but doggone it, I'm an American. Yes, an and, American and person. you know, that's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. And if it's good for Polk, it's good for Hillsborough, it's good for Lake. Right. If it's good for business, yeah. it's good for the rest of the folks. <laughs> so that's me in a nutshell. And, uh, there's a lot more. So. Well, honestly, nice. that's why I'm here. I can't vote for you. No? No, I'm in... Um, oh, you're up here. Western's yep. district. Yes, yes. Good. But I, the way I look at it, 
anything anyone does in 15 or 6 Makes or any of them affects me. Yes, it does. Absolutely. It does. Yeah, I'm in Congressional District 6. Yep. Yep. Well, and, you know, and I saw Darren Soto the other day. You know, he's on the other side. He's Winter Haven. He's Democrat. And I took him on a tour up in Apopka uh, about six months ago to several different uh, nurseries, mm -hmm. nursery capital of the world. And uh, he's on the House Ag Committee. It was probably a year ago because I was actually courting him for this bill that I had, and he <coughs> liked the bill. Um, and, you know, you get Soto out in the field, and you get him amongst the farmers. He's a fairly decent fellow. But, unfortunately, he only votes party line. Yeah. That's, that's ridiculous. He has to. Because but they I, do something. I don't know if they have either. something on them. But they will sit there and vote for the stupidest stuff, even when you know them, and they act like... They all together. They, yeah. And they a just lot more than we do. I know. stand well, obviously. individually. We, we certainly, you know, we have the Freedom Caucus, we have this caucus, we have that caucus. And, and at the same time I met with Soto, I met with Yoho, Congressman Yoho. And, and he and I became friends, and, you know, he's part of that Freedom Caucus. And, you know, he needs support. That group needs support. Who will you caucus with? Well, I, I don't know if I would go all in with them, but I, their balanced budget part has got to be what's, what's done. We have to have a balanced budget. Now, I totally believe you legislate in the middle. I'm sorry. You have to. You're not always going to get everything you want. But you can't stray from your faith and your beliefs and your core values. That's where the you stay hard line on. But when you're negotiating a trade deal or when you're negotiating a budget, we know we want a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. How do we get there? What do we cut? We're going to cut. We have to. So that's when you start working with everybody that you can. And say, people, this is not sustainable. So would I caucus with them? I, I certainly have the values that they do. But I, I think there's some things they do stand a little firm on that, that may preclude something moving forward. But at the same time, I believe this. I think the next two years, unless the red tsunami really happens, and it may. It Red or blue? Red. 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 Okay. Red. Red. So, red. so, red. so red. Scott red. wins. <laughs> away, but a red tsunami. Red. So Scott wins. We, we get maybe four or five senators. Yes. Life can change. Yeah. yeah. It's going to happen. It's and it very happen. well could. Yes. If that does, then things are going to start changing next January. But if it doesn't, and everything stays kind of status quo, which is not bad as long as we maintain control. I think the next two years is, is going to be gridlock continue because mm -hmm. the Democrats have the ability to provide gridlock. But when Trump gets reelected, and there truly will be a red tsunami because life is still going to be good, yeah. man, things are going to change. Both sides will start working together. <coughs> they have to. They have to. The, the gridlock can't go on for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's gone on for a while. And it had to for some reasons. Gridlock can be good. Reagan said there ought to be a bill against having a bill. One thousand percent for that. You know, you go to the state house, they say, "Oh, you got to sign seven bills. You got to have seven. Why? Every bill I would put forward would eliminate something. That would be my bills. Good. Eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. DC's different. <coughs> That's my goal. Elimination. Every I, the three bills that I've put together are elimination bills, reduction, streamlining. Helping the helping the president even further, so that that's where we got to be. Well, you were talking about the education, mm -hmm. and did you see Mick Mulvaney's presentation at the cabinet meeting about putting uh, education in with labor, and that would strangle it? Well, okay, and, uh, okay. It was wonderful. He is a he's, he's a smart, smart man. Book. Oh yeah. Yes, great. That's what they're working on now. It's turning education into labor Thanks. and then that I'm way. wondering about that, though, because most of the people that I've seen that are anti-common core the, and all of this kind of stuff are dead set against that because what they're looking at is that it's trying to pigeonhole kids and start kind of like China does where... Starting to, oh, slot. you you'll be better mm -hmm. at this, or yes. you'll be right. better at that. I know what you're saying. Well, how can they and do that if he if he finds out 
fi finally strangles off the education department. Right. I don't understand why they think that. I'm all in favor of strangling it. My first reaction, <laughs> yeah, my first yeah. reaction was this is good. Right, right. But then when I started reading, I mean, people right. like other Dr. Karen Ephraim and um, yeah. some of these other folks that are anti Common Core, anti testing, anti, you know, sure. Department of Ed, and they've got some valid arguments against that approach. Well, so it's something I would want to. You know, absolutely. I mean, you know, you roll into agencies, whatever. I maybe it's got to happen. You got to do something. Well, I think get rid of the department right. of it. And why not? Even though Perry couldn't think of it. Right. Rick Perry. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I remember that. Well, but why not? I mean, honestly, what are there teachers up there? Are they teaching students in uh, the Department of Education? No, no they're, they're not. Just, they're just like up here. We have this top number of <coughs> right. PhDs and all this. They don't teach. No. They don't do anything. They just give mandates and talk in the cloud right. and all this stuff. And But your they, first responders, which are our teachers, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. man on the street, the woman on the street, they're the ones that are fighting that battle. And, you know, they... You're in a conservative county, which is good. So you probably still. My first teacher, I went to Baptist school for seven years. My mom, I went to public school for one day in first grade, and my mama yanked me out of it after that first day. It was, it was during some bad times, and it was not a great school. And she put me in a Baptist school, and I spent seven years there. Uh, you know, chapel. This cha I've read the Bible twelve times. Good for her. Good for her. Which is great. Important thing to learn. It is. But I wanted to go back. I did want to get into public school because we were, we had a very different little society. And, and I wasn't exposed to many other people. So I felt like I wanted to go to public school. So I remember our first time was going to, uh, to uh, a summer, summer open house at the middle school, seventh grade. And uh, I went in there and it was summer and the windows were open. I asked my mom, I said, Mom, why are the windows open? It's hot. We get inside, this school didn't have air conditioning. Yeah. Now, we are going back to the public <coughs> private school right now. I'm not going to that place. So, <laughs> so then the next year, though, I got to go to high school, and that they had air conditioning. <laughs> so, I never in all my years of school had air conditioning. Well, I did. And that, that was in Palm Beach County, County Florida. Florida. Well, we didn't have that was Palm Beach County, Florida. Holy oh, see, cow. Uh, yes. Oh, wow. See, we that sea breeze didn't more. help much, we did it? <laughs> Little. I don't know. We always had open windows, but nowadays yeah. they have to have the... Windows with the shatterproof know, glass, steel, and bulletproof. bulletproof. Yeah. But my first teacher that I remember in public school, super liberal, we're good friends to this day. He challenged me every chance he got. He was a Big Bang Theory. He was a biologist. He believed <laughs> oh, in the Big Bang. <coughs> well, obviously, I believe in creation. As right. five, seven years with the Baptists, yeah. you're going to believe yeah, in creation. You <laughs> Whether you don't want it to or not. Oh, that's right. <laughs> we did but him. But he allowed it. And he thrived on it. He let me argue with him, and he would argue with me at my level, mm -hmm. not above me. Mm -hmm. And it brought and this class was predominantly my side because it was you know conservative school. <coughs> so we would fight all not fight, we argued at least once a week about stuff like that and why this, why that. And I'd have to go home and study and 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 come forth with an argument. That's what school was about. Mm -hmm. You knew they were crazy, you knew they were yeah. liberal. But they let you be who you were. Yeah. They didn't indoctrinate you. <clears throat> they just said to their side and or, or what they were supposed to teach. We don't do that anymore. Now we're just pounding. Well, the problem now is there isn't any time for that. Right. Because, I mean, we have grandkids in public schools here in Lake County. And even though it's conservative, they have these certain standards that they have to teach. Yeah. And don't let anybody tell you we don't have Common Core. Yeah, right. we do. Yeah. But... <clears throat> They go, okay, we're teaching standard one, three, and seven this week. They go on a computer, they look it up, they get these printouts, here they are, and here we'll test them. Oh no variance. And no they're variance. very biased because yeah. we've already had a challenge. We challenged That's one of our grandkids. I have a friend, a very good friend, who's a school teacher, and <coughs> she really dislikes that Common Core and all that stuff, she said, because all these standards that we've got to teach and mandate and then they want us to actually teach right. Right. and uh, you know because it was supposed to save um, 
you know, they take all their tests and everything on a computer, and they weren't, you know, of course I didn't believe that, but about uh, having them, <coughs> teachers didn't have to grade papers anymore. And, and, she, and I asked her, I said, well, that, that never came to volition, but I said, that was kind of dumb because how, how would a teacher know how a child is doing if they don't read their work? Right. You know? I know it's it's a failed system. Mm -hmm. We we know it For is, sure. and we got to change. You know, we need we need to teach our kids civics. We need to keep, teach our kids. You know, they they need to get them to say the pledge every day. You know, they we need to get out and run around in, in the in, on PE every day too. Every now and then, just we got to bring that back. Mm -hmm. It served us well. Yes, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. You know, we were not going down the wrong road. We just shifted. Mm -hmm. We, we took a, a U-turn on that road, and, and now we need to get back on the right path. I'm going to shift gears here, but um, what what is your stance on our health care and, and the repealing that horrible, affordable health care sure. act? That's a great question. Beyond and, affordable. And beyond, beyond affordable. Beyond affordable. Right. And our president kind of took my thunder away on that, so I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> so I started my campaign and said, you know, we have to have association health care. So in the 90s, I was a member, I still a member of Farm Bureau, but I was a board member and uh, served on the state board. And we always figured, you know, as farmers, we didn't have insurance. We were self-insured. It means we paid our own bills. Uh, but, you know, why can't Farm Bureau, with its 100,000 members, pull together and offer health care? Yeah. You know, why, why does it have to be exclusive to a business, exclusive to certain things? So, but you couldn't. Legally, you couldn't do that. So that was in the 90s. Here we are, 27 years later, the president finally comes out. This president says, we're going to do association health care. Well, that was my, one of my platforms, so I'm going to strike that off. Good, done. We, we're good. The second thing that we have to do, and I think he's going to work on that too, but he'll need help on this, is we need to get rid of the 50 little kingdoms we've set up around the country. So every state manages through the chief financial officer or the chief insurance regulator, whatever that position is in that state, they have rules and regulations for <coughs> selling insurance in your state. Mm -hmm. And so you have Blue Cross of Florida, you have Blue Cross of America. You don't have Blue Cross of America. Yeah. You have Blue Cross of each individual states That's that right. they want to be in. Yeah. So did we have to do that? There was a time. Because especially in Florida, the elderly were being taken advantage, a lot of carpetbaggers, as we used to call them. Um, so there had to be certain regulations. We don't live in that world anymore, people. We live, we're still older, we, we still remember those things. <coughs> our children and our kids, our grandkids, they are changing the world. Mm -hmm. They demand transparency. They demand to know where their food comes. They demand to know that business isn't, isn't uh, polluting. Capitalism has grown up. Capitalism is really becoming what it's supposed to be. In the old days, and I'm getting to this, but in the old days, rivers were on fire. That's why we created the EPA. Because there were businesses, and because of making the money, it's just what they did. That's what they did. Well, they right, wrong, they or indifferent. Know. Right, so wrong, or indifferent. Yeah, exactly. Really we drained the Everglades. We didn't know. We could do things differently today, and we will. So we grow up. But today, if a business dumps. There's somebody with a cell phone going to take a picture of yeah, it for or sure. video. <coughs> yeah. So they're accountable. Yes. We can reduce the regulatory footprint because consumers hold businesses accountable. That's capitalism. That's how we're growing up. And I believe we're in an era like no other when it comes to that. And with Trump's help, it's going to be better. So with that said, allowing insurance companies to sell cross state lines, allow that because can there be unscrupulous acts? Of course there can. But they're going to get caught quicker than they would have in the 70s, the 60s, and the 50s. So we can manage that a lot better. Those two things alone will put hundreds of thousands of people on insurance that currently don't have it. It, it will. If you become a member of Farm Bureau, bam, you got insurance opportunities. Yeah. Just 100,000 members in Farm Bureau just in Florida. You think an insurance company is going to give them a good deal? Oh, yeah. Of course they will. So bam, they're, they're, you're covering more people. So, so how can the government be involved? Well, they, they do what they're doing so far. 
They reduce that uh, the control all the 50 states have. And then you got to ensure we cover pre-existing conditions. So there's some rules the government can do. They don't, they don't pay for anything, they just make some rules. And that rule is co continue to cover pre-existing conditions. And doggone it, insurance companies, you guys are covering tens of thousands more people. You're making more money. You need to include mental health care. Yes. For sure. Thank you. So the 80s, we destroyed that. It wasn't a good system in the <coughs> 80s. It was sad. Uh, somebody was up Jackson County. Yeah, me. So, and uh, your ACI, you know, the hospital up there. We had the health, the mental hospital down in Arcadia. Mm -hmm. I'd seen that as a kid. I just you know, yeah. actually had a, a family member that was in there. Wasn't pretty. Mm -hmm. But it was a system. Mm -hmm. Now it's just decimated. So we need, and, and, and you can't afford quality mental health care. So I, swear, I know this happens. I know this happens. You have a family, and you got a family member, or a child growing up, and they got issues. Mm -hmm. You can't afford to get quality care for that person. No. So you, they're just, you pray. Right. You hope and pray. There's no place to go. You hope and pray. And then that person turns into a shooter. Yeah. Well, you know, when they started back, well, back in the 80s, and stuff, when they started closing all those mental health institutions, yeah. They started putting them in nursing homes. Yeah. Yeah. And they had no place else to put them. Right. And that was not a, that was horrible. Because mm -hmm. they had no skills <coughs> to take care of those folks. Plus, it was a lot of young people. You just didn't put them there. Uh, what no. would that look like? You say we have to have pre-existing and we have yep. to have mental health. Sure. Does that mean that I cannot buy a policy that doesn't have those? No, things? no, no, no. Absolutely. You've got to be okay. able to choose. Okay. Your I'll policies choose. have to be cafeteria style. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, as a 20 or 30 year old, you don't need 99% of the stuff. You just want ca yeah. catastrophic coverage. And as a person growing up and an old business owner, I, I said we're self-insured. We had, we had an insurance policy that kicked in after $10,000. And then we set, put money aside mm -hmm. that, you know, we paid our bills. You just yeah. went bring the hog to the doctor or the chicken, that's how you pay your yeah. bill. But if there was a disaster, we knew after $10,000 our insurance company was going to kick in. When you're 55, like me, you don't necessarily want a $10,000 because I'm going to be the doctor a few more times than I used to be. So now I might pay for a $1,000 deductible policy, but I don't need abortion coverage. And, and nor should we mandate that, but if, you know, because I'm totally against it, but I don't need... I, you don't need a gynecological cut. If you're a single person, you don't right. need that stuff. Yeah, I don't want to pay for your birth control. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> Just don't. So that has to have that opportunity. And so that's where the federal government can come into play. Okay. Lessen those rules and regulations. But if the mental health coverage is there, and, and unaffordable, because again, you're going to give these health insurance companies a whole new market to sell to. They're going to make more money. Yeah. So why not provide that health care coverage? To play health. devil's advocate, sure. wouldn't that be like the dental insurance where I wait until I need it? You know, right now, I don't need mental health coverage. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But five years from now, who knows? <laughs> 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 my husband might make me crazy. Right, right. Or tomorrow, <laughs> for that matter. <laughs> We can't for afford mental health coverage for all the Democrats. Well, that's yeah, that's true. Right. That, that is such so a <laughs> million Americans. Well, they're going to have to pay that. Yeah, we'll so mad out with her, her yeah. insurance. As long as they pay their the roof. But, but you have that's to make your decision question. up front. Yeah. You have to make your decision up front. Yeah. And but it's a risk power. factor. How much risk yeah. are you going to take? You know, Just like living on the lake. Exactly. I'm going to live. General Honore, who helped clean up the Katrina disaster for Bush, he said, you know, at a conference I was at, he said, if you walk out your front door and you see water, you're in a flood zone, you're, folks. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. You need to take responsibility yeah. for yeah, your that's actions. Right. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, I live, I've lived near the water. I've lived on the water. I don't now, thank goodness, because living on the water is a pain in the butt. It's a whole set of problems you got to deal with. Plus, the insurance costs a whole lot. Oh, yeah. Insurance. yeah. But that's your, your responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's your responsibility. Yes, exactly. You have to have your own responsibility in life. Yeah. You can't rely on the government to take care of yourself. No. Nope. It's us. And and you build a uh, you build an economy that allows that to happen. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to the place where Trump's doing it. You know, the deployment's happening. 
we started a new business this year, my wife and I. Um, you know, we just felt like it was time to, hey, life's good. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and was, we started before I started running, so we probably wouldn't have started it. <laughs> what is that business? Can well, we, shift? We, have, we have a staffing agency. Oh, okay. Yeah, because people can't find employees. Yeah. There so we help. started that, mm -hmm. and it's working out well. Can we shift gears? Because we're t spending a lot of time yeah. on just single subjects. Yeah. Uh, how about you coming from agriculture? Does that include me? Is that considered part of the industry? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, so sir. then the question is that. They've changed a lot of rules so that uh, now you can't see which country a lot of food is coming from. Oh, yeah. And I frankly do not trust anything coming from China. I, don't no. know. I mean, absolutely not, not. I mean, you Nothing. can go out and you get maybe dog, but That's you know, right. other than that. Not even uh, dog food. They <laughs> you don't want dog. Especially yeah. dog and food. and so my dog. question is do you see, so the whole idea of food safety to me is very important because. Mm -hmm. Those people have no ethics in China mm -hmm. and yeah. other countries. That what they do is they'll they'll prove it's safe for the initial order, and then they they drop down the component mm -hmm. whatever's in that, and they mm -hmm. adulterate it. And it's yeah. it's the national it's the national way they do things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's too many videos out there that show that and people <coughs> that are over there yeah. showing That's exactly me. that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, how do we? Uh, how do you think you? Or the industry can protect Americans with food safety on all of this coming in from other countries. You know, our company, uh, Highland Precision Ag, we're releasing it. Uh, we were going to do it on the 1st of July. I think it's a little late. But we're releasing a, a virtual food safety program. So I know a lot about food safety. Over the past two years, we've been riding this program, mostly for specialty crops, strawberries, blueberries, and were you hands-on with the, with the product. But... But it certainly can work in, in chicken. In, it, it can work in beef. chicken, hog. They're beef, shipping cattle. it there, processing yeah. it, and coming yeah. back. It, it works with all that. So we need country of origin laws. We the industries fight that, not our industries. The not, you know international uh, countries will fight that because we don't want to know. They don't want us to know where their food comes from. Does the trans. Right. That's right. The Trans Pacific Partnership. What, nobody talked about this, would have decimated the catfish industry in America. Because there is a fish, and it's still here, and it's called sway. Yeah. And you'll see it in prepackaged. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is an Indonesian grown fish. Mm -hmm. Some would say it might be grown in waste uh, pools. Yeah. You know, we yeah. don't know. We just know it, it's a basically a non a white, not much flavor Very fish, meaty. and it, it rivals a catfish. It's cheaper. So it would have decimated the catfish industry without anybody knowing that. So the president, not even probably thinking about the catfish industry, but smartly cut that off. Good. So we have to do that. We have to look at these trade agreements, and it's true trade. So NAFTA has been around for 24 years, never been looked at. It destroyed the tomato industry, it destroyed an old time tomato industry. It's starting to hurt blueberries, which is big in Lake County. You got a lot of blueberry yeah, growers yeah, out here. Yeah, <coughs> It is starting to hurt the strawberry growers. There's a man in Plant City that every year borrows $23 million to plant a crop. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Really? One man, one company borrows $23 million to plant a crop <coughs> every year. That's ridiculous. But think about that. That's the investment he's making in his community. Yeah. Workers, plant, tractor, everything he's oh, buying right. locally. Yeah. What if he goes out of business? That's just it. Yeah. yeah. So what Mexico is doing, you know, Plant City has a strong growing season of December, December, January, February, March, roughly. Three, four months. Mexico's growing season is nine. Mm -hmm. The rules that are in place right now, there is dumping rules within NAFTA. But if Mexico dumps, it has to in hurt the whole industry. So they'll dump in January and destroy Plant City, but because California's not growing strawberries, uh, it, the, the law can't be enforced. Uh, that law has to be changed immediately. Mm -hmm. If it, if a Mexico if Mexico dumps product on our shores and it puts any industry any region out of business, they need to be sued. They need yes. to be taken. Mm -hmm. That's got to change. So we do the same thing on our international laws. So we have to start monitoring that. We have to put more power in checking it. We know Mexico puts product in our on our doorsteps that is over the the, the amount of uh, chemicals they're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. We know they do it. We don't have the manpower to check it. 
we don't even really check it. We need to at least start spot checking it more than we ever oh, do. Yeah. We may start at the first, like you said, you start the first, yeah. and then we stop. Yeah. We got to continue to spot mm -hmm. check that. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things we need to do. So we beef up our trade laws. And that's the only way we can do it right now. And, and I, that's why I stand with the president. People don't realize, like with China, most of our exports go to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong is exempt from this trade war. It, it, it has different rules because they were different. You know, they're part of China now, but they still have different rules. But our imports have been increasing into mainland China. Pecans, George pecans are just growing crazy, and, and pork. So that's where China's trying to hurt us, because that, that they're, they're increasing their, their imports into mainland China. But, you know, still we sell a lot into Hong Kong, and, and we're just now growing into mainland China. We can suffer through some tariffs, we can beat this, and we can make trade fair and safe through, through our trade laws. I, I just don't see the will on the part of Congress to protect no, us from don't. the no. crap that they're sending right. in. It's not just the food, it's the, the electronics. Oh, uh, yeah. I just this morning I was watching uh, adulterated uh, auto parts and mm -hmm. how the mechanic took it apart and he showed how they cheapened down to everything yeah. and it wouldn't work after he put it in his 20 year old Lexus. Right. He, he oh, practiced yes. on his wife and put in these subpar parts in the car and she came to him within two days saying there's something wrong with the car yeah. it doesn't handle like it used to and it's because he put in these cheap Chinese parts that were just adulterated and they dropped the quality of everything and we you need protection from that yeah. Congress, <coughs> congressional leaders that will change that Rick Scott yeah. will work to change that I will work to change that because I've lived it and I've seen it I know what needs to be done and that's what has to be done. Excuse me while I'm thinking about this. Oh, and we don't need any of our defense things made in China. Or our airplanes. <laughs> no, our rockets. No, no, everything. Yeah. Defense. That has proven that our planes were going over the Black Sea and all of a sudden their electronics shut down. Yeah, they And they were made in China. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of our security for America. We did that. Our electronics are made here yep. for our defense of anything. We've done that because we, 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 over the years, we have discouraged manufacturing in our country. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, service. And, um. and steel, steel coming back. And, I, and people say, well, you know, I'm willing to pay a little bit more mm -hmm. for American products. I would submit to you, if we have a robust manufacturing economy, mm -hmm. that works. And we continue to lower the corporate income tax, which we went from 35 to 21, we bring that down to 15%, I don't think the products are going to cost that much more. Right. right Be because now companies are making money. Mm -hmm. They leave and leave and go overseas because they're paying 35% tax. Right. Well, at 15%, now we're competitive with the rest of the world. Hey, go to 10, I don't care. Whatever it takes mm -hmm. to build that manufacturing back in this country, mm -hmm. and we won't pay those costs. So. Trump's doing that. He wants to do that. He wanted 20%. He wanted 15 They went to 20 and then we got 21 But we'll get there. Mm -hmm. We will get there because the American people are saying, doggone it, it's working. Last week, they had pictures of a person at um, Apple. Apple and Google and Facebook has all talked about, well, we can't get these good minds coming in from because of Trump, blah, blah, blah. Well, this good mind had a box full of stuff and he walks out of, of Apple. He's got all their information on you know, technology. On. They, he's got a whole laptop. They're, they're stealing our technology as well. And he was walking well. boldly through a airport. Mm -hmm. With intellectual property. Intellectual, intellectual property. property. It was fixing to go to China. Had a, oh, had a ticket to go yeah. to China. was going to give it all. Electronic car from Apple. He was going to sell to yeah. Chinese people. Yeah. 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 And finally, I mean, they. I'm surprised that Apple woke up and would let do that. Right. If you brought Google, they wouldn't have. Right. But uh, they're griping about losing their intellectual property. But we got to do something about it, which yeah. means cutting down on these people that they just want to come in here yeah. and do anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then they complain that there's well, still... and outsourcing too because yes. yeah. I worked for an insurance company and, and a lot of our clerks lost their jobs because they outsourced a lot of the information mm -hmm. to okay. India. And now you had um, all of these people. <clears throat> anytime you faxed something which you thought was going to your company, you know, in the United yeah. States, was going over to India. You wonder why all of your information is being there. stolen? It's yeah. because it's being outsourced right. to all these other companies. Countries. Yeah, in countries. And, or countries, I'm sorry. And people don't really, I mean, the, 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 the increase in, in uh, uh, identity theft can be attributed to that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I've... Back, I think it was about a year and a half ago. I, we were down in Miami. Uh, actually, no, we we're actually we did, went. I took my wife to a uh, a shooting range, Altair Gun Range, in in the Everglades. And it used to be a prison down there, and it's where we used to hunt. So I heard it was near Everglades City. And my wife, she wanted to you know really learn how to shoot a pistol better. And so I found this. And there's a great lady teacher down there. And these guys teach the military. They're they're sharp. They got a couple operations. So that'd be kind of fun. We'll go stay in Everglades City, maybe a little fishing, and, and you go. So I'm, I'm dragging her to this prison. I'm like, where are you leaving me? And I left her at this prison to learn all day long. Like, scared her a little bit, but she she learned a lot. But, but while I was down there, I somehow, some way, we we did our part somewhere, whatever. But a couple days later, you know, we're yeah. somebody in Opelika had everything. My, I, I I was getting address changes and everything else, and it's just because. Of what you said. So we, we are very, you know, I own LifeLock now, so I'm a member of LifeLock. Just, <laughs> yeah. You know, pay $300 yeah. a year just to monitor mm -hmm. that. Shouldn't have to do those things. No, that's the biggest but, stuff today. But we are an electronic age. <clears throat> so yeah. we just have to safeguard her. We got to do better on our own stuff, too. So, mm -hmm. yes, ma'am. When you came to our REC meeting, you said something that, I don't know if I misunderstood or whatever, that gave me pause. Okay. Where do you stand on illegal immigration and treatment of the DACA people? Sure. Good question. So, working with farmers, I've realized real quick and in short order that, you know, you have a fellow up here at Cherry Lake Tree Farms. <coughs> they will pay $15 an hour for employees, and they can't get employees. So, they go through what they call the H-2A program. It's a visa program for, for farm labor. And uh, so, the problem with that system is that from year to year, we don't know how many people the federal government will allow to come in. The numbers change. But the program's growing. So as, as labor, as less and less American labor is willing to get out there and work in the fields, farmers are having to look elsewhere for labor. That's got to change, number one. But what you see, these people are year after year employees. They get that visa. They come to America, and they go home. They're not illegals. Right. Now, there's illegals in right. the mix. We right. know that. Mm -hmm. We know that happens. we got to farm that out. But these guys are hardworking right. people. They're making mm -hmm. a gazillion dollars in their mind when they right. live in Guatemala. Yeah. In Florida, you have to pay $11.23 to an H-2A worker. That's the minimum wage. Well, Cherry Lake pays them $15. And, and so they do well. So... We have to have a long-term solution for labor, and that's not only for farmers, that's for business. Disney Disney has an H-2 program, too. They bring in workers through the visa program as well. So we have to solve that. We have to make it long-term, and I have a plan to do that. We have to have a pathway for citizenship for DACA, yeah. but it has to be at the back of the line. Thank you. And the only reason I say that is yeah. because we made a promise to them. Our previous administration said, sign up. And you get it. So, yeah. as a country, we made a promise to a group of people. Now, if they're criminals, get them out of here. If they're of that element, and that's easy to find out. So, as they're registering, as they're going through the through the citizenship process, we weed them out if they're bad people. How does that look, getting in the back of the line? Well, what, Do they have to go <clears throat> back home and come back? No, I don't think they have to go home and come back. And, and they, they, a lot of them are business owners, a lot of them are working... They just have to get, just like anybody else, they have to get their green card, they have to get their visa, and they have to start, you know, going through that they process. Mm -hmm. They have to apply. So we have a, a lady that works for us that two yeah. months ago, her and her daughter became American citizens. Great people. They're from Baltic, one of the Baltic nations. And so proud, so happy that she did this. Took her 15 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Her daughter's 17. So her daughter was two when they came. Mm -hmm. 
So she was just before becoming a, an adult in America, and she became an American. Fifteen years to that's got to be streamlined. So we need to we need to help the Department of State. We need to ensure they have the employees needed to to process the visas, and then and get labor in there to help them process it. So you you put them at the end of the line of everybody. Everybody's in line. Even the people that are overseas waiting. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. If you've applied and you have are an um, uh, application in good standing, you're in the front. You're in ahead of the DACA people. And then thirdly, there was a third element to that. Oh, we got to build a wall. You got to build a wall. Yeah. We we can't do this because we've proven this in the Reagan, Clinton, Bush. We, we've given amnesty it through every administration because we don't build the wall. We don't control the border. So if you don't control the border, you do all this. Mm -hmm. Five years, we're going to be in the same boat. Ten years, we're going to be in the oh, same absolutely. boat. So that's got to stop. We got to end. We got to stop the bleeding. So you build the wall, you manage our borders like we are a country, because if you don't, it's like letting somebody come in your own house yeah. and never leaving. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, you aren't supposed to be here for that long, you know, get out, get out. So yeah, we can't do that. Feed right? and support them. <laughs> Feed why, and support them. Why, why do we give um, public aid, housing, right. education to illegals? To yeah. illegals. Yeah. Why and why do they have any rights that the American citizens have? And then they complain. Yeah. Because I think if you cut off their bread and butter, which the is whole. why they're coming here, or they, they wouldn't or, come. Or they they would wouldn't come to, to begin right. with. Or the ones that were here would actually try to get in line and stay here the right way. Exactly. If you exactly. Cut off that bread and butter. And then how do you keep? I know you have to build a wall, but that's years down the road. All of these illegals that are being sent back to their country. Mm -hmm. How do you keep them out? Because right. they're coming back they four and five and six and ten times and committing crimes. You throw them out again and they're back again committing another crime. Well, well how about you turn them around at the border? Yeah. Well, you have to. And don't ever let them in. You have Even to. Even if they walk in and step foot, over them, we have to let them in. That's so wrong. Kick their ass that's wrong. Right that's right. to be changed. That has to be changed, yeah. yes. It does. And Congress doesn't have the guts to do it. Yeah. So. You know, we have leaders up there that, that will kick the can, literally. Um, what we just said, 80s, 90s, early oh, yeah. We always have amnesty. It's a great wedge thing for isn't an election. It? Isn't it? That's got to stop yeah. people. I'm concerned about the H-1B visas. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, we know what Disney did. Yep. And that's wrong. And, and what then? I'm sorry, I don't know. Well, they hired all these people from overseas. Right. Made the people from our country that were working at Disney train them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and then our people then lost our, their jobs. Our, our Americans yeah. lost, lost their jobs. Lost their jobs. Gotcha. Gotcha. The other thing gotcha. is, if there are fifteen dollar an hour jobs out there that Americans will not do, mm -hmm. I think bringing people from another country is solving the wrong problem. The problem is, we're giving these people a way to feed themselves and buy their iPhones without working. Well, there you go. So, yeah. if we cut off all the unemployment benefits and the welfare benefits and all that... They might get a job. They might go work for $15 an hour at Cherry Lake. Exactly. What happened to the high school kids that were taught how to farm and detassel? Well, I'm from Illinois, so yes. detassel corn. <laughs> when you were in high school, everybody detasseled corn. That's what you did right. for money. Mm -hmm. Wasn't fun, but my goodness, there you made some money. It wasn't fun, but you made some money. Well, Whatever know, happened to that? Those are all good points. You know, we got to get back to that. So, America is a kind and gentle nation. <clears throat> we want to help people. Used to be our churches and our families did it. That's what Government's so taken over to. that role, yep. unfortunately, but we've taken over that role. So we can change it. We can change it by, by weaning it off in such a way that we say to a, to a single mom, go out, get a job. And you go out and get that job. We're still going to help you with daycare, with whatever you need for a period of time, mm -hmm. even though you're making more than what that rule says you have. Because honestly, change the rule. Exactly, because honestly, if you're getting $2,000 a month or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you go out and get a job making $2,000 a month, well, now you got daycare, now you got this, you got gas, right. you got, well, you're not making what you were making. Mm -hmm. So it's a discouragement to get a job. We all know that. Yeah. So you tell that person, you go out, you get your, because you can get a job. 
you get a job, we're going to let you have and continue these benefits for six months or whatever that time frame is mm -hmm. to get you on <coughs> your feet. And then it's done. Yeah. And it could be a year. My goodness, they're on there for 100 years now. Yeah. So give it to them for a year. You know, whatever it takes to get them on their feet. And if you fall back off of it, you only get like a three strikes you're out. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. You know, there's going to come a time you just get cut off. Right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You yeah. tried, you didn't make it. Well, Wisconsin you with, had a wonderful plan. We'll help you with years. the first baby. Yeah, right, right. After that. Right. You're kind of on your own at that point in time. Yeah. We'll just take the kids and raise them ourselves. <laughs> Send them to um, Guatemala. Um, <laughs> another <laughs> part of this illegal alien. Mm -hmm. My husband was in pharmaceutical. Yes. Big pharma. Big pharma. <laughs> <laughs> and we already saw. We won't hold this again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like big, big sugar, uh, too. Yeah. You know. He was already seeing the problems because we were in South Florida in West Palm Beach and began. And then when we came up here, he still had to go down to Okeechobee City yeah, yeah, yeah. and those places yeah, down there. Many times. And I would hear the CDC say, we haven't had a case of measles in six years. We mm -hmm. haven't had a case of this or that or the other thing. Remember the man who flew in from Bangladesh and he sat there in Atlanta where CDC is mm -hmm. and he died yes, I because did. he had uh, bubonic plague? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my husband, from time to time, he would have to go and take medicine out. They had plague. They had rubella. They had whooping cough. They had everything down there that they said we've never had. Right. And, uh, because and of I know, immigration. And because they would, as they used to call them, wetbacks would yeah. come in. And they had no medical history. Well, there's another thing with these kids coming over from Guatemala and stuff. They are going to be clogging up our health system. Yeah. Because Probably. down there, they can go into a pharmacy and they, their parents can get all kinds of antibiotics and everything and just shove them down. They don't no go to the doctor. No. So you know they're going to be built up immunity to them. So it's no telling what they're bringing in here. I know with the ones when Obama brought in, they were they were flying them all over the country and yeah. dropping them, and right. nobody knows where they are. Mm -hmm. right. I can tell you because there were little Outbreaks. pockets mm -hmm. of rubella. Yeah, that wow. means that children of our citizens mm -hmm. Get it. I will get it, and the mothers, and then they have children yeah. that are have physical and mental and health problems, which will be forever. Huge and consequence. Yes, yeah. there's Huge. many consequences. Ellis Island used to not let people in right. until they were de-loused. That's yes. right. De That's exactly. right. Coming in the front door. We, we used to do up. that. Yeah. And we used to have doctors that checked. If we wanted you. We wanted you to be here, yeah. but we didn't want you to bring bad elements with right. you. Yeah. We, we, we don't. And, and that's a good point. That's scary. It yeah. is scary. It is. I didn't really think of it because one of the things the government wanted to do, and they're still working on this, is there's a rule that certain agricultural products cannot be brought into this right. country above the 32nd parallel, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, that's right. Because up there, it dies. You know, any of the bad things gets cold and dies. Mm -hmm. So, well, they're they're wanting to increase, uh, you know, uh, trade, again, through trade deals. They wanted to, to do away with that law, which would increase Port Everglades, Port of Miami, Port Canaveral, and Port Jacksonville, it, to allow those products, because it's convenient. So, while I say we don't do that, we continue that rule because we have HLB, which is green, we have canker. Mm -hmm. Now, some would say that maybe it came, HLB came in from product, because that's a Chinese problem. It didn't fly over here. No. You know, greening, we think, came from South America through, through hurricanes or whatever. So we can get issues, we know that. But if we just let anything come into our country mm -hmm. unabated, yeah. now they say, well, we quarantine it at the port. Well, you know, what if a storm comes through and blows it all out? You just mm -hmm. didn't quarantine it. Yeah. When we were in the fish business, we could sell uh, uh, piranhas. Mm -hmm. I, I think you still can at some point in time, but you could sell piranhas, but you could only sell them above that parallel. Because if they actually got out, they couldn't survive a winter. You couldn't sell them in Florida, which is a good thing. I think they found piranha in the Miami River. I think they have. Yeah. Because well, they're Paku, yeah. and they're off, there are Paku. Uh, there's black, and there's... there's Forms yeah. of them. They're just not the ones that eat your legs. They're terrible. Yeah. Uh, 
up in Chicago with and the snails. Great lakes and yeah. snails, snails. And snails clogging yeah. the waterway. So yeah. we, we know what happens, and again, it's through trade. We have to have ironclad trade laws and agreements. It helps with the, 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 the immigration as well if you have that strong trade agreements that are fair, not just free. Sure. We believe in free, but it's got to be okay. fair. Mexico uh, subsidized all their farmers. Well, that ain't fair. You know, they let them spray whatever they want to on their product. Uh, methyl bromide is, is something that's been banned from the tomato industry since the 90s because we thought it depleted the ozone. We don't know if it did, but hmm. we banned it. They thought hairspray depleted the ozone. Well, they did too, too. exactly. The they did. And then all the hairspray that's containers clogged. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But hair Mexico. Brain, hair brain ideas. Come on, I'm a hairstylist. <laughs> but Mexico still uses those products. Yeah. They, it's still manufactured. They still use it because it works. And we're eating it. It's yeah, cheap. It. It's right. How cheap. does that work, though, that the same people that are such progressive environmentalists, right. I, I mean, they don't want us to eat apples with this on it or that, and they are all against Monsanto and everything yeah. like that, but then they're okay with all this trade and with this, it, it's... Like they, well, they just—it's cognitive dissonance. Yes, it is. is. <laughs> well, they are fighting. You oh, know, big words. <laughs> it is. There's a there's a uh, corn in uh, in Africa. What's that? It's called golden corn. It's GMO corn, and and what we found out is that this corn is it, it, they've added vitamin K to the corn. That's all it's been done. And in Africa, kids are dying for the lack of vitamin K. There's no vitamin K in Africa, apparently. They don't. They just don't have it. And but this, and they, and in India, they have issues with it too. So in India, they've been pushing this corn, and uh, the kids, the, they're much stronger survival rates. Kids are healthier. They're getting their vitamin K. Africa will not allow that corn to be grown in their country because it's GMO. How ridiculous is that? I mean, it's it's not that it's got pesticides in it. It's got vitamin K that has been engineered into the corn, and that we know will save people. And there is no long-term effect to it. We, I tell people every, every day, ever since we stopped becoming, ever since we stopped being hunters and gatherers, okay. we have GMO'd everything. Yes, sure. What was that guy's name, Mendel? Yes. That did the peas? I think, I, I don't know for sure. Yeah. I mean, we've been engineering. Kale. You know, the vegan's dream of kale, that's GMO. Well, you know, it may not have, you know, it may not have been engineered with different things, but it's engineered for for color, mm -hmm. for yeah. flavor, yeah. and 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 it's all engineered. Yeah. You know, we do that, you know. Uh, so, so I will say this: strawberries has no GMOs. Just so you know. <laughs> people ask, there are some products you just don't, you know, but but GMO they're, does not but they're engineered. No. You know, we come up with color. It we depends. want pretty colors. With if we ate the best. original corn, we wouldn't eat it. Right. It was nasty and it was ugly. Mm -hmm. But now we have pretty corn. Cows ate it. It was, it cow, was corn. cow corn. Because yeah. in the north, they, we grew the corn, yeah. cow Silage. corn. Silage. Do you get it or Big enough, it's sweet corn. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. No doubt. Right? Field corn. I think yeah. GMO <laughs> is a misnomer um, because, you know, to me, if a product says it's organic, why do they need that label of GMO? They don't. Or non GMO, they don't. Non-GMO, you know, I mean, um, because if, it's, if you, people know, it's just a terminology, I guess people buy the products. Yeah. Well, organic, you know, they, they've done really good of branding that organic. They've oh, done yeah. a great yeah. job. But if we if if we only ate organics, we'd starve to death. They, they can't make, there's not enough grow organics. You just can't grow it. I Bugs tried that in my backyard. It did not work. Yeah. you got to spray something on it if you want it to survive. It, it was either me or the worms. Right. right. Somebody in a big pot, it's doing really well and it's producing more peppers. <laughs> but my tomato plant that I have in a pot, mm -hmm. um, it's got lots of blossoms but no tomatoes. Wow. So, you know, I don't know what's bees, going on that you can bees. get a spray. Spray yeah, spray. But you know, one thing, that th these are all good oh, conversations because that's what Congress can do. Anything with international trade, interstate commerce, you know, bringing local control back to the folks, that's what Congress can do. You know? That, this, this is good conversations. Really How about, uh, you know, Trump is over there right now and he's uh, attacked um, uh, Germany. And now uh, England with Brexit, yep. and he's basically just 
telling them, you know, we've been screwed and, and he's standing up, like you say. Are there particular things that you see from an international diplomacy standpoint that we ought to either do more of or different uh, in relation to the other countries? Well, I think, you know, I was listening to him on the way up. There was a press conference that he was doing with uh, Theresa May. Yep. Oh, that, was, that was funny. Wasn't it good? <laughs> <laughs> Pointing out a few fake yeah. news outlets. Sam, yeah. I'm not going to answer your question here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll apologize. No, it's fine. We're just, we're good. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're good. Well, you know, Trump is a negotiator. So, yeah. and he uses his, I, I've come to realization that twi the tweets are his uh, um, uh, hand grenades. Yeah. So he just throws a hand grenade. Whoever's left after that, we negotiate with. <laughs> and, uh, if you can survive the tweet, we're good. Yeah. And he'll negotiate with you. He doesn't care, but he's going to negotiate from strength. Yeah. Yeah. So as a country, we are America. Yeah. The world has gotten rich off of us. Oh, yeah. sure. You know, in the Bible says that in Armageddon, in the end of the world, yeah. that the uh, Babylon, the prophetic Babylon, not the real Babylon, but the prophetic Babylon was a country, a nation that the world got rich from, and when it was destroyed, the world cried. So I, again, yeah. Baptist school, I read the Bible, yeah. and I love prophecy. So you read through that, you think, you know, was that us? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. hopefully it's not, hopefully that doesn't happen for another million years, or, or maybe it does. But we've made the world rich. So it's time for us to stand up and say, you know what, we've got our own issues we need to deal with. We're tough. We want you to be good. We want you to have a good life and enjoy life, trade with us, but it's going to be fair. So what he's done with NATO, we believe in NATO, yeah. but it's got to be fair. But, yeah. It's got to be fair, people. you got to start putting in your fair share. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you know, now he's at a stronger position to negotiate with Putin. Because NATO is anti-Russia, right. theoretically. That's right. Yeah. That's, why, yeah. That's why it was created. Yeah. So now it's a, a stronger footing. The, the people, other than France, because they're crazy. But all the <laughs> nations of NATO <laughs> back that. France kind of capitulated. It's, nah, we really, we don't go for them. But, but they will. They will. Trump will make them do it. Oh, yeah. If you want to be part of it. It's got to be fair. So I support that. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. For us to be able to say, darn it, we're America. Take America back. Exactly. And, and really we're going to negotiate from a, from a standpoint of strength, not weakness, not where we give up everything to be friends. Or apologize. Correct. Or apologize. We're, gonna, we're not going to give up anything. We're going to take back what's rightfully ours, and they're going to come kicking and screaming, just like China. They, yeah. they will do it. If they want to negotiate, if they want to trade with America, now China's a scary part. They, to me, Russia doesn't scare me, other than they do have nukes. But China is strong. Yes. And China, you know, I had a friend of mine that works for Syngenta, and it's a large chemical company that China owns. And uh, he will tell you, China will have global, will have food security. Currently, they do not. China is huge in Africa. They grow crops all around the world except America, although they don't have a lot of real estate here, but they, because they need, they have billions of, they have so many people, they can't feed themselves. But they will. And they'll feed themselves by buying land around the world mm -hmm. or taking it. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the two. Well, the lady that just left, uh, Luke, mm -hmm. that you met. Yes, ma'am. She was from Iowa, and she went back up there for Funeral. And she says the Chinese are buying land in Iowa. Well, yes, and how do you wow. stop that? Yes. Because I don't yes. believe we should be selling our land to other countries right. that, that don't especially, have the same interests we do, right. especially China. Especially food. I was, I was also in yeah. real estate for quite some time, and I didn't like to see that. No. Um, it's, it's American land, and it should be owned by Americans. Well, no. this was period. This is the second wave. First, they started buying, like, downtown Manhattan right, and, and things like that. Now they're going to the hinterlands and they're buying up cropland. Yeah. Well, they were because buying they up all the foreclosures, too. Yeah. I know yeah. that. And yeah. they're in bulk. Yeah. In bulk. Because they were so And cheap. we know, 
history says if we can't manufacture and we can't feed ourselves, we are not a country. So we have to ensure we feed ourselves. we got to maintain our own food security. Well, our neighboring state, Alabama, mm -hmm. um, the city of Dothan, um, they brought the Chinese in so because they want to get their hands in the peanut growing process, yes. peanut farmers. Yeah, the Chinese and, love the pecans. And the pecans and all that. And, it's, and peanuts, yes. the people were against it, but, you know, the, the governing officials just... Let them do it. Let them do it. You know, in Georgia right now, and I work with a lot of pecan growers, you go, if you drive up anywhere east of 75, that's the predominant part of it right now, every piece of property has got a, a pecan tree on it right now. This big, this big, just because of China and Tifton. Yes, huge. Mm -hmm. And I go up there, I used to go up there every other week, it seemed like. But, you know, China right now, and they, they import, these pecans shelled. I mean, they're all in the shell. So the grower just has to grow it and send it. You know, you ain't no cost. So it's a big boom right now. So again, that's why I fear because what happens is China just well, we'll start coming over here and growing our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and we can't we can't let that happen. I, I'm not smart enough. I will be honest with you to say I don't know how we stop that. But we certainly need to watch that, and we need to figure out a way to make sure. We don't let all our farmland go to another country. We can't let that happen. Our greatest, that's our greatest asset. You can't reproduce land. Correct. We only have so, so much, much land. Correct. I agree. And you're not going to get that back. Once no. they take it, you are not going to get that's that right. back. That's right. And the Chinese, because they have no moral turpitude. Yeah, that, right. They don't. They don't. They don't. They'll do to our country what they have done to their own country. I know I was talking to a missionary, and they have just gone in, and you know those high rises that they house their workers yeah, in, yeah. that they have to put uh, screens around the little balconies so they don't commit suicide and right. jump out. Uh, wow. They're just bulldozing them down and making these huge canals so they can get water that's potable. Right. Into Beijing and the outer areas. They just destroyed their environment. Yes. They have no no care. They kind of remind me of Independence Day. <laughs> they feel self so <laughs> destruct. Right. I mean, they come well, in and they just yeah. they just they're like locusts and they right. just come in and they take everything and then they, when they it's destroyed. That's who we have to watch for. I mean, we truly do. And so I, you know, I think our president is there. I think he's. He's watching this very closely. He's a yeah. different individual. Oh, he you is. see, what He's bothers me is that the American people, excluding us, do not even see these dangers. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. the Muslim invasion scares the hell out oh, of me. Oh, yeah, for sure. And yeah. we have communities all throughout our country where it's completely run by no, Shia. Yeah. No go zone. And we see what's happened in Europe. The That's one why guy, Brexit happened. The one guy that we've had speak at some of our meetings, um, a professor from UCF, the two cities, he is from, um, I'm trying to remember the country, but anyway, he says his country's gone. Yeah. His country's gone. Where's Matutsitz from? In, in Vance. What? Matutsitz. Where's he from? Oh, from you said Belgium. 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 Oh. Belgium. And he says his country's gone. Yeah. yeah. And he says the rest of the Euro Europe is almost there. Yeah. yeah. And, I don't know that. and we don't even, we're not even trying to come up with a plan. I mean, well, well, Trump tried something here. and all the right courts this oh, my lost their minds. But he still won in won. the Supreme Court. I was in Berlin we turned it in, in 90 or 7 with the University of Florida, a bunch of ag, bunch of farmers went on this tour. Okay. And Good, this yeah. happened to be up, so during the weekends we weren't working, we were just kind of on our own. And uh, the the northern Iraqis, uh, the, sh the sh Shia, uh, were the Shias? Shia? Shia? I think the Shia. Uh -huh. Shiites. Yeah. Shiites. So we were supposed to protect and we kind of left them on their own a little yeah. bit. But a lot of them had migrated to Berlin. And uh, they were doing a peaceful protest through the streets of Berlin on a Sunday, which was good. I mean, they were they weren't clogging the streets during the weekday, but there was thousands yes, of them. thousands. And they were holding this flag up and a picture of the fellow they, they think is the rightful president of Iraq at the time, Hussein was still in power. And uh, I, I went up to him and, you know, I was like, what's going on? And it was so funny because 
No, I couldn't find anybody speak English. But every single one of them spoke French, German, yeah, yeah, sure. Spanish, uh, yeah. or they knew somebody yeah. that did. I was like, holy cow, I'm, I'm, just, I'm an American people. Yeah. I speak English. Yeah. <laughs> find somebody, uh, which was surprising to me. It just shows that, you know, we do need a little bit better there. But, but that was in the 90s the invasion was taking place. Right. Oh, and yes. Germany is years. tragic right now. It's yes, tragic what's it happening. And again, that's why Brexit happened. We're tired of this. We, we do not want just open borders. Mm -hmm. We want to manage our country because, doggone it, it's our country. Yeah. Well, Brexit happened, but it hasn't happened. No, no, no. It, that's right. it was well, loaded in, but they haven't it's done anything. That's right. Well, that's just it. And, and May is one of the problems. Trump yeah, May doesn't some, want it to Trump happen. Trump told her something today on he this did. stage. Yeah. He, did. he said, I'm all for you, whatever you do, but get Brexit done. Yeah. yeah. He and he said, he said, I told her that. He should do it my way. Yeah. She should do it my way. And who knows, maybe she will. Yeah. So. Uh, every <laughs> she does person it. that I've known or that has come from another country have said their first language they're taught at the time they start kindergarten is English. English. Yeah. And they're multi, uh, multilingual. Sure. We're not multilingual no. here. But it's required. They have to know English and um, Fran like French, French. Mm -hmm. and Spanish because it... Um, French is the most spoken language around the world, then English and Spanish, yeah. those are three main languages. So when they come here, they can talk fluently to they us. They can. You know, and that's a good, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. We, we live in a, no matter what anybody says, we have a world economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do. And that's why we're having struggling with these trade deals, because these trade deals that have been put in place to create this world economy have been unfair to America. So now we just got to, we got to, we, we can't suck ourselves back from that world economy. We just can't. Mm -hmm. But we got, like the president is doing, we got to just make sure we renegotiate these deals to make it fair for us and the American people. Not just for America, but the American people. You know, and that's, I think, where he's going, and, and I'm very happy with that. And I do believe trade is our biggest contention. And he ran on that. Yeah. Well, and allowing, like, the Chinese to come over and buy up companies or land and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband worked for IBM, and in 2004, maybe, <coughs> Lenovo mm -hmm. bought the part of the business that he worked in, yeah. mm -hmm. and he became a Lenovo employee. Gotcha. Right. Well, Lenovo's a Chinese company. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, and they've been banned yeah. by the Department oh, of Defense yes. because oh, they're my. integrating. Oh, I didn't know Andy Ward, but I knew Lebeau. Yeah, Lebeau yeah you have the chops and they're integrating uh, spyware yeah. in their hardware inside. And, uh, and stop using my Lenovo, my little TV little bill. I would never buy a Lenovo. <laughs> I guess I'm not. Huh, see, this is. This wow. Is, um, and he, um, I he worked for them for a few years, for them for a few years yeah. as a yeah. contractor and stuff, oh, yeah. and then went back to IBM as a contractor. Right. But I, I thought that was just not right even back then. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the Navy was buying through contract from Venezuelan oil, you know, Sitco and Venezuelan oil yeah. through our contract. Mm -hmm. and, and that wasn't Obama, that was Bush. That wasn't, you know, we put a lot of blame on Obama, but all previous administrations did something stupid. Mm -hmm. And our president will tell you that. Yeah. It's been going on for a long time. Well, Bush, Bush was the one who initiated the, um, the stimulus package. Exactly, exactly. He spent yeah. like a sailor, you know. And his and, daddy and, was the one that started Agenda 21 that's back right. in Rio. That's right. Yeah. And and the thousand points of light mm -hmm. with Common Core. So our own party has, has our own, we have our own ills to deal with. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to just ran with it. He did. He kind of built the play. It was the progressives, you know, and then and you back to Woodrow Wilson, who was probably one of the chief progressives back in the you know teens and twenties. He led that, and he was a Republican. But you know, over time, we started to realize this is just not the way it's supposed to be, people. And so that that has begat Tea Party, mm -hmm. that has begat Trump. Yeah. So you know, I think Republicans now today are starting to come back to their own. They're they're realizing, you know, we are conservative folks. And we want it back, and uh, so and I think Trump is that new face mm -hmm. of the conservative party, and, and I believe it's a face that negotiates. I believe it's a face that we're going to make things work. Like, come on, people, well, we're, not, on we're not going to be obstructionists, but we're going to do it the right way. He said on TV, um, he said, "Look, 
that's what I do. I make deals and I right. negotiate. That's what I, my specialty is. Correct. And that's why you hire me. Your so wishes have hung out with the Obamas and the Clintons more yeah. than they've hung out with conservatives. Correct. And now you see pictures of George Senior Bush, I call him Senior yeah. Bush, with yeah. Obama and Clinton. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah he's hanging out in Haiti. Did he? Yeah. Did he oh, say right. something yeah, to Clinton? Yeah. Hey, you took Working eighty million thing. dollars out yeah. of Haiti okay, was and then you uh, with crushed card. bodies of children, yes, and right. they took eighty million. Right. right. What did the Bushes say about that? Oh, he's sitting there with Clinton. Little group. Well, the interesting thing is Obama got us all going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really thank him for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because he got the Tea Party started. He got all of this. Don't we started, we started holding our elected accountable. Yeah. We started yeah. calling yeah. them and stuff. We weren't doing that. It woke us up. It woke us up. But then the left reminds me of a two-year-old in the grocery store. That just means look at them. Yeah. Go and lay up. But when you... Yeah. When you ignore them, the uh -huh. they get louder yeah. and yeah. screaming yeah. more for a while yeah. until finally they get tired. Yeah. 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 You know. Well, they're not going to win this battle in the And not. honestly, I think <laughs> I've got a lot of people that you know quietly say we're going to vote for you. Yeah. In the general, they're Democrats. Yeah. They can't yeah. vote. Yes. I guess the primary. Right. But so they're maybe southern. They're still. I don't understand why they're still Democrats. Obviously, a lot of them are leaving that party. A lot of them are leaving. But some of them are staying. They're saying, you know, but but we we know you're the right we guy, or we know this. And, you know, we got to change things. Yeah. And I said, well, come on over to this party. Yeah. The kid who's running, who was on the Democratic <laughs> side in this race, Andrew Learn, um, told me not too long ago. He said, I was a Republican. I said, well, come on back. Yeah. You know, why, why are you a Democrat? Because of all the social and he just got bought into that. You know, yeah. school changed him. Yeah. And and I don't get it, but. But I believe that, that we're winning this battle. I believe we're going to win in November. We're going to win in August. This I think is who we're he going is. to continue to win. And, and I'm not tired of it yet. No. I, I, I still want to win. We have to pay attention to our district. We do. There's, um, Most. there's a candidate on the Democrat side. He's been having ads on TV. Um, Jeff Davis. Chris. Oh, Chris. Yeah, Chris. I believe in and, um, at all. He's for uh, legalizing <laughs> all of marijuana <laughs> and... Right. Continue with um, pro-choice and right. all these bad, very liberal, social, social whatever. And um, like he's a communist at heart or something. I don't know. Yeah. But he's well, a, Graham is too. I mean, they all they all They, 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 they buy into it, but he's and worse. He's worse. I mean, and so he was wearing, um, he was wearing three uh, on the commercial. He's got three uh, little ribbons that he was wearing. One was rainbow. One was a, you know a liberal leftist yeah. idea. And, Black Lives Matter, maybe. Yeah, that that you know all these different things that he's. So There's there's a new wave though. If you follow Facebook at all, there there's is. a new wave on there called um, hashtag Walk Away. Yeah, yes. I saw that. And you would not away. believe, you would not believe the people that are flipping. Buying into it. Yeah, they yeah. are. They're they're Walk changing. Away. They're walking away Walk from away. the Democratic yeah. Party yeah. and they're coming over. I love that. And, he just did. And, and I think that's I our next that. wave. Oh, there you go. Go. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. They, they have lost their minds. Yes, they, they have. have. Yes. I mean, they're they crying about you. the kids. They're illegal. Their yeah, parents yeah. broke the law. Yeah. If we break the law, we don't have someone to take okay. care of our kids. Well, guess who gets them? That's right. Every day. I talk to the 4th of July. It's very easy. And that's a perfect example. I talk to a lot of people that are in that space. I've been in 19 countries around the world. You guys are not much aware. The minorities are awesome right now. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 you know, yeah. people yeah. like yourself, you know, yeah. just a good person, and, and all of a sudden, you know, your party oh, okay. leaves you. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 Would you like some coffee or donut? Oh, that's fine. So, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, my biggest question to the Democrats is, what have you done in the last 20 years? Right. Put it on paper. Yeah. Trump's you. got you blown away in a year and a half. Come on. Right. All his promises. You had a question. I, there's something that a lot of people don't know about is that NAFTA highway that's going up the middle of our right. country. Yeah, that was that was started, I think, under Bush, but uh, maybe Obama. It but it was certainly was going to be a bad thing for sure. I know. It goes from Mexico to Canada with only yeah. one stop in Kansas City. Right. Mm. Exactly. So, and, and again, you know, when you, NAFTA's 24 years old. Mm -hmm. 
the start of January of the 94. So all deals got to be renegotiated. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness, you just don't sign a deal unless it's your mortgage <laughs> for 30 years. <laughs> yeah. But even then, you go in and look at it every now and oh, then. Yeah. You might refinance. Exactly. Right. Your insurance. You go call somebody else that might give you a better deal That's on insurance. Right. You, know? That's right. you just don't live with something for 24 years without looking at it. Yeah. And if yeah. we did pass the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it, the same thing would have happened. Just more flooding of just cheap, Food, manufacturing products, everything would have been in our doors, and you know, and, and it would just destroy us. Look at the terrorists that's letting me come in. Right. Because it's not only a highway for cars; it's a truck highway, right. a railroad, and oil yeah. pipeline underneath. Yep. And that, all of this is stuff. I've been working on that since it came out. Wow. Passing out information sure. when it first came out, because I had the picture of where it was going, and. and Remember where the bridge in Minnesota collapsed? Mm -hmm. I do, yeah. Okay, it, that's where it took its turn to go to New York. Wow. Well, um, what it stopped it, I think, was this uh, truck coming up from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they have no standards for keeping uh, commercial vehicles right. viable and right. everything. Mm -hmm. And they were coming up in Texas. The drivers, and, everything. And um, mm -hmm. it... Threw, it, threw the whole wheel off of it, yeah, something like hit that. a van right. with four children in it and their yeah. parents. Mm. It killed all four children. Mm. Um, and there, and then that's when it hit the fan. It's like, come on, people. Yeah, that this was blasted all over the country. And I think that's when they stopped that, thinking that later on they would resurrect it. Yeah. Yeah. But the last happened. I knew, they were still working on it up, up farther. You know, oh, up you know, you can't just... Texas. It's like the ship. You just can't turn the ship on a dime. Yeah. You know, Trump's there. So he's he's starting to turn the ship. Yeah. Well, now it's time to turn the legislative ship. Yeah. And honestly, it is not going to turn with the leaders that are there today. He's definitely yeah. pulling the oil to the top of the water. It is. Yeah. And so, and, and they're it's not so going to bad. Turn. Peter it's Strzok not showed turn. it yesterday. That's right. It's not going to turn if we elect more politicians. Right. No. You got to get people in office that have this this here. The last thing I'll leave with, I remember leaving Washington. I might have said, I don't think I said this, but I saw Charles Kennedy in 1995 in Washington D.C. He's our Chief Justice now in Florida. Mm -hmm. well, he was a congressman of District 15, and all of our congressmen going back to Andy Ireland, Kennedy, Putnam, Ross. Well, they've all only served eight to ten years. They've really done pretty well. They get the heck out of there. But I saw him in D.C. and he, we're leaving a meeting. I was up there with some farmers and he gets in a powder blue Escort. A piece of crap little car. It was rusty. <laughs> driving off. You know, he's a little guy anyway. And I saw him a few weeks later, maybe a couple months later in, in Lakeland. I said, Congressman, why you know I'm I, 95, I was about 35 or so. So I'm like, why are you drive that little piece of crap? He said, my treasures are in, in Lakeland, not Washington. <laughs> so I don't want to live here. I go up there and do a job, and yeah. I come home on the weekends. I said that's the right way to be. Yes, and, it is. and all those things have fashioned who I am, and why I do believe in term limits. Why I do believe these people go up there. You know, there will there will not be living in Washington with Danny Kushmer. Danny Kushmer's coming home, and and if I get the chance, like I said, eight years and done. Because I believe in two years, you have to take two years to get to know the lay of the land. Mm -hmm. Two years to start cutting things that needs to be cut, or at least introducing things mm -hmm. to cut. And and then your next two years, on your six years, you should be having those bills out there that cuts things, not ads. And then your last two is passing them. And if you can't do it in eight years, let somebody else get it there and try it. Mm -hmm. it. It shouldn't take you ten. You know, we, we I, I, like I said, I was a bureaucrat for a few years, but I did my job and I left. I was hired to do one thing, I did it, and I left. If I couldn't do it, I need to leave and let somebody else do it. That's what Congress is supposed to be. And, you know, I, I, somebody said, well, why didn't you run for a local office, county commission, city councilman? A Republican has says, build your political resume. Mm -hmm. I said, because I'm not a politician. And I don't think our founders was concerned about building a political resume. No. No. I'm about going up there making a difference. And... If I can't, I'll come home. If I get up there and it's just that, I, I don't think. I think Trump's bringing that way. If we start bringing more business people up there that's like me, 
that has wants to change. And has experience and has worked with it instead yeah. of has these right. wonderful ideas. Knows what ideas. you pay for gas. Do knows you the use cost social media? I do. And, and we're, we got a cool thing. So we, you know, we're, we're definitely not the top tier candidate. But we're gaining momentum. And we got this new ad agency that's come on board, and, and they do the Bucks, they do the Tigers. This old fella, he's an old fella, and he knows everybody. I know I love him. He's great. And he's, he's doing some things for us, and we're getting ready to blow up a lot of cool things social media-wise. You know, he's, he's got ulterior motive. He thinks if I can get you elected, then I got a great new, new tool to sell to my customers. <laughs> so I... I I'm okay, cool with that. That's good. That's good. So, uh, but our we have Kushmer for Congress. Uh, it's on you know well my website's on the card, but you can go there and there's a link to Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, so all of those things are there. And uh, Facebook, we, we you know we started we started all this nine weeks ago, eight weeks ago. And and mean new kid on the block. Exactly. We we and we have no you know we're not politicians. We don't have. We don't know what we don't know. Well, How familiar learning. are you with Heritage Foundation yeah. and Heritage Action and I'm Free very Corps. familiar. And, and, you know, I, I carry this around, too, and, and from uh, Hillsdale College. Okay. So, been involved yeah, with those guys. Yep, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Been involved in getting their newsletter for probably 20 years. Um, I've been concerned my whole life. Well, many my of whole us life been are this. what's called Heritage Action Sentinels. Yes. Yes. And we have Monday calls at 5.30 to talk about the few things that sure. Congress is doing sure. this coming week. That's our and cue. that's really? our cue, yes, that's our cue to call the congressman yeah. and send letters and emails and tweets. If you will mind, if you take my card and you just send me send me some information okay. on that, I would appreciate that. Because again, you know, we, we, just, we just run our business. You know, we're out there working right. every day and... Uh, it just recently, I've kind of pulled back from the business because you got to run for Congress now. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, for a while, I, you know, my, my the one person I hired said, "You got to do this." You know, I said, "I got to work too, people." <laughs> so now I'm now I'm Congressing it. Yeah. I'm I'm running this battle full time now. Just really started this week, and so uh, so there's a lot of things we we're catching up on. So yeah. great. Just make sure you bring in your sign. I'll bring my sign so that the yeah, cards here. I'll bring to them. a lot of people from all over. I know over. you do. Yeah. All yes. over. Stay, stay with that one motto of the people for the people. Absolutely. Yeah, really. yeah. Don't get lost in that. Yeah. It's just common sense. I, well, there is no such that's thing a video that's series we're going to watch starting right now. Yeah. Yeah. You're ready for the zoo? I know. <laughs> that's the video series we're starting. It's really, it's just common sense. Yeah. That's that's the tagline yeah. at the yeah. end. And because it is, people. Yeah, it is just common sense. You know, I think everybody should reread yeah. the Constitution. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Really I got one in my car. Yeah. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It was a pleasure. We're going to get a picture. Please. Oh, yeah. Get a picture of everybody.